Inaugurated on October 29, 1961, the Palace of Justice of Porto is monumental in its appearance and size. 3,600 square meters of covered area divided over eight floors. Three of them rest below the main entrance, in front of the Gardens of Curduaria, designed by Rodrigues Lima and ultimately portraying the architectural and plastic aesthetics of the political regime of those days, the Estado Novo dictatorship. Inside this building there's an important artistic ensemble, breaking with the official formality in many aspects, bringing together a remarkable group of artists who are becoming known and today they are an absolute reference. Said artists are the creators of around 50 works about different themes, predominantly the history of Porto, including bar reliefs, paintings and frescoes, tapestries and sculptures. Outside, stands the colossal statue of justice by Leopoldo de Almeida. It's one of the biggest Portuguese pedestrian statues, around 7 meter high. Crafted in bronze and inspired by the goddess Themis, justice is portrayed without the usual blindfold, symbol of independence and objectivity. In this interpretation, we are faced with an open-eyed, vigilant justice, carrying the punitive sword and a scale, symbol of equality in judgment. Around the statue, there is a bas-relief on granite by Euclid Vaz, illustrating the four cardinal virtues – prudence, justice, fortitude and temperance. In the entrance porch, one can find the sources of law, jurisprudence, customary law, equity, natural law and doctrine, represented by five three-meter-high granite statues by Salvador Baratafeio. On the west façade, there's a reference to an evocative statue of João das Regras, crucial jurist in the 1383-85 dynastic crisis, whose interventions made sure the throne would belong to the Mestre de Avis, thus securing the national independence. It's a sculpture by José Sousa Caldas. In the hallway, the visitor is greeted by the granite statues of Ferreira Borges, a prominent liberal personality in the city who won accolades in commercial law in the first half of the 19th century, and João Pedro Ribeiro, doctoral canon of the Cathedral of Porto. The authors of these sculptures were Lagoa Henriques and Gustavo Bastos. There is always something artistic to see on every floor. On the second floor, in the Hall of Lost Steps, five frescoes by João Martins da Costa illustrate the path of crime, with biblical scenes involving Judas basing civil law in a divine order. In the same floor, we can also find, in the former Civil Court 6, two bar reliefs on stone by Henrique Moreira. One symbolizes the pillory erected in a public place and on which penalties imposed by judicial decisions were enforced until 1834. The other represents ordinary judges wearing their professional vest, the row preparing to read a judgment. On the third floor, in the hall of the Lost Steps, Antonio Coelho de Figueiredo is the author of five fresco panels, representing the last destinies of men, death, Judgment, Hell, Heaven. In the middle panel, Moses accepts the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai, in a reference to the Divine Code. In the fifth section, you can find one of the most important works on the Palace of Justice, entitled Assistência à Infância Desvalida, Profilaxia do Crime. This fresco is a work by Julio Rezende and underlines the importance of social action in the salvation of children in danger. In said panel, among other personalities, the figure of Padre Américo stands out. In this floor's courtroom, there's a bas-relief on stone by Eduardo Eduardo Tavares, representing the traveling judge, exhibiting an open book, and the corregidor with an extensive list of subjects to be solved at the king's service. On the fourth floor, in the seventh section, the Criação da Casa da Relação do Porto, a fresco by Augusto Gomes, is one of the most iconic works on this whole artistic ensemble and represents the solemn opening of the institution in 1583 and its first governor, Piero Gedge, Oath of Office. In the courtroom of Court 3, there is a bar relief 
carved in granite by Manuel Pereira da Silva, recalling the exhortação aos cruzados por Dom Pedro Pitões, Bishop of Porto in the 12th century, next to the door of Vendome, crucial moment in the conquest of Lisbon from the Muslim dominion. On the sixth floor, in the office of the district attorney general, there is a tapestry by Sousa Felgueiras, representing the chivalric historical legendary episode the 12th of England, in the transition of the 14th century to the 15th. Narrated in the Lusiades, it became a pretext for the famous reference of Luís de Camões to Porto, in that famed loyal city whence it is said illustrious Portugal derived her name. In the first section, courtroom, the fresco Preto de Lealdade de Agas Muniz by Guilherme Camarinha represents the famous and legendary episode of the history of Portugal of the 12th century, in which the supposed servant of Dom Afonso Henriques, Agas Muniz, with a rope round his neck, submits himself and his family to the King of Castile. In the courtroom of the first civil court, the main highlight is the Criação da Casa dos 24, with King Dom João I delivering the royal charter to the first judge of the people. This work, by Fernando Fernandes, dates from 1958, but because its aesthetics, somewhat expressionist, was dissonant in relation to the other artistic interventions, it only came to be displayed in 1971. This is the floor where the visitor finds the greatest number of artistic interventions in the Palace of Justice, including the most imposing and relevant ones. Imposing thanks to its sheer size and harmonious interior design, the courtroom is the building's most important division, with its side walls decorated with monumental frescoes by Jaime Martins Barata related to two relevant episodes in the history of Portugal and in which Porto had a prominent role. On the eastern wall, there's a depiction of the marriage of King Don João I and the English Philippa of Lancaster in Porto, strengthening the Anglo-Portuguese alliance. Influenced by the Porto bourgeoisie, this was crucial for the young monarch's accession to the throne. The royal couple was returned to Porto on other occasions. In 1394, Henry the Navigator will be born in this city and will then return to his hometown in 1415. The fresco on the western wall represents the departure from Porto of Henry's Armada to Suda, thus initiating the Portuguese maritime expansion and the process of globalization. The panel portraying the prince on horseback also shows the legendary detail of the gut casing extraction of one of the many carcasses that would then be salted and sent with the boats and men, so all the meat disappeared from the city, thus creating the distinctive culinary delicacy tripas a modo do Porto. Next to the courtroom, we find the Court of Appeal Hall of Sessions. As a general rule, this room is not open to the public, but it's where we can find two remarkable frescoes painted by Durdio Gomes, representing two historical courts. The 1254 Leiria Court, in which the monarch Afonso III enforced for the first time the representation of the people, and the 1385 Coimbra Court. These courts would prove decisive in the defense of the national independence. In this period, the intervention of João das Regras assured, for the only time in all the long history of the Portuguese monarchy, that a bastard ascended to the throne, Mestre de Avis, a legitimate son of Dom Pedro I, acclaimed on these courts as King Dom João I. Right next to it, one can find the premises of the Presidency of the Court of Appeal. In the reception room, we can see a tapestry by Amandio Silva, entitled Portocale Civitas Virginis, addressing the legendary episode of the Gascon's Armada, allies of the Christians in expelling the Muslims and reconquering the city. This legend would give origin to the image of the patron saint of Porto, Our Lady of Vendome. In the office of the president of the court, there is a large oil painting depicting Antonio Luis de Siabra, first Viscount of Siabra, responsible for preparing the Portuguese Civil Code, which came into force in 1867 and lasted for a century. 
Next to the presidency premises, there is the admissible Judicial Museum of Porto. Created in 1991, this museum accommodates historical processes such as Camilo Castelo Branco, Zé do Telhado, or Urbino de Freitas, very old law books, and a remarkable collection of objects that testify and narrate the history of the Court of Appeal of Porto. The Hall of Lost Steps on this floor features five fresco panels by Severo Portela Jr., representing five episodes of the city's involvement in the origin and defense of national independence, the granting of the borough charter to the Bishop of Porto at the beginning of the 12th century by Dona Teresa, head of the Portugalense County. The subsequent withdrawal of the Lordship of Porto from the Bishop, the festivities in Porto after the crucial support of the people and bourgeoisie of the city to the accession to the throne of King Dom João I following the dynastic crisis of 1383-85. The festivities in Porto after the restoration of independence in 1640 and the uprising of the city against Napoleonic troops during the French invasions of the early 19th century. In the Hall of Lost Steps, it's also worth mentioning the porch of the courtroom, with several coats of arms belonging to the councils of the Judicial District of Porto, carved in bronze by Irene Vilar and Maria Alice da Costa Pereira. On the fifth floor, there is a fresco by Isolino Vaz in the conference room, portraying the inauguration of the Commercial Court of Porto in 1834, with a special focus on the speech read by José Ferreira Borges, mentor of commercial law. In the courtroom of Court 2, the artistic intervention is of a different type. A polychrome bronze by Erlindo Rocha evoking the Royal Council of Dom Dinis, early 14th century, and to the right of the king's image stands the corregidor with a rod of justice. 